Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar with Dr. Manu Meyer. And um, we're really excited that Manu is joining us today. Um, this webinar today is part of a series that I Don't Know More has been ha having to commemorate the one year anniversary of the movement. It's kind of exciting and um, really uh, unbelievable to think that just a year ago um, on November 10th was the beginning of this movement that started with four people and now is spread all across the world. And so we've had two other webinars so far. If you haven't had a chance to see them yet, they're really fantastic. The first one was with um, um, Anishinaabe activist um, Winona Leduc, and she talked about stabilizing Indigenous economies. It was a really great webinar because she provided some solutions to some of the um, dire situations that we're in right now. And so um, without the solution part, um, you know, it's really difficult to move forward. And so her, her webinar was really fantastic. Um, the other webinar that we've had was with uh, hosted by the Native Youth Sexual Health Network. And um, they talked about um, the criminalization of Indigenous women and how violence on the land is also violence on our bodies. And um, Aaron Cons Consmo uh, moderated that webinar, and Krista Williams from the Native Youth Health, Health Sexual Network, and also um, Sarah Deer was on there. And we heard from um, the sister of Dana Deegan, who told the story of uh, what happened with her sister and being incarcerated and um, how the justice system unfairly treats Native American women in, in the U.S. So today's webinar we have Dr. Manu Meyer and Manu is from Hawaii. Um, she's currently um, joining us though from, from her home in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And uh, Manu, for many of you, uh, you probably know of Manu's work. She's uh, quite well known worldwide for her work on Hawaiian epistemology and indigenous epistemology. And uh, you know, before her academic career, she was also very well known as a as a um, international athlete. And she brings in her knowledge as a uh, a Hawaiian and grounded in land based education and um, her work from in the food sovereignty movement as well. So we're really excited to have Manu here today. And uh, Manu, we're going to turn it over to you now. So aloha. Hui, aloha mai, Alex, Spencer, and Erica, and Sheila. Aloha mai, everybody. Can you can can everyone hear me? Yep. Yep. We can hear you. Go. <clears throat> Kukuluo pua kai, ma alihi lani kai, kula lani kahi ko kai, elo elo o lalu i kawaio kula ni ha ko i, kulu kulu mai la ua, ha veve mai la ua, loku loku mai la ua, e o loko lalo nei, i kupu a mu o mai la, mu o a lau la mai la, lau a la la mai la, la la a kumu mai la, kumu a pa a ino ole. Okay, that is one of my favorite Oli to begin this um, session, Alex. Um, and that is basically talking about I don't know more. We are here to celebrate one year of being I don't know more that actually extends our work for thousands of years, everyone. Every single person in this webinar is doing something because you were born to be doing something. So I just want to thank you guys in uh, the nations up above uh, North America. Thank you for your steadiness. Thank you for your inspiration worldwide. It is happening. We are becoming idle no more in Hawaii, in Australia, in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, the world is waking up. But um, it's really time to do it consciously. So that's my job today, is to extend the work um, of your I Don't Know More movement um, and to be clear about why we differ 
as an indigenous movement throughout the world. And the, the practice and the ideas that will make a difference in all institutions is to first see how distinct we are. And the distinction of our indigenous knowledge systems is in the field of philosophy called epistemology. So um, Sheila, will you um, change to the next slide too? Please, slide. See, we're just kind of figuring this out, gang. Is it working, Sheila? Mm -hmm. Next slide. OK. Now, um, as a proof that the world is self-organizing, but it's only through our own consciousness, we here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, the Maori, have allowed the development of a master's program called Hewaka Hiringa. Hewaka Hiringa is called, um, in Hawaiian terms, Hewaii Ini. What it means is um, it's an applied master's. And, and it's, it's really about the idea of effulgent coherence. Can everyone say effulgent coherence? Let's hear it. Ready, set, go. Effulgent coherence. And that means, and we're going to go through a couple of ideas so that you, we can all understand them together, that um, when you have a principle like I don't know more and you combine it with action, which is I don't know more, you have effulgent coherence. It means all principles touch every aspect of your practice. And in Hawaiian terms and in Maori terms, that's called maramatanga. Maramatanga. See, it's in our old languages, everybody. All you got to do is go back into our language and you, you, you it's like popcorn. Um, and you follow that popcorn and, and we will get out of the of fraka that we have found ourselves in. And Maramatanga for me is one of the, the biggest popcorns that, have, that has gotten me out of the philosophical quagmire of epistemology. And that is, you got to be effulgent in your thinking. You can't be saying one thing and doing another. You can't be just saying something and not doing anything. You've got to be both. You got to have an idea, you got to have a plan, and it's got to be effulgent. It's got to touch everything in your day. You got to eat a certain way, you got to think in a way that's liberating, you got to meet people that's liberating. That's effulgent. Um, and this image right here is about Kalai. It's where um, Maori, it's where Hawaiians left a thousand years ago. And that's why I'm here in New Zealand, because our Maori are our cousins. They call, they, they refer to to Hawaiians, to me, as their tuakana, as their elder sibling. And um, this is why. You can see the names of the canoes, um, Hawaiian and in, in Maori. And these canoes left, and they, they ha we have stories, they have stories, and um, we see our people in Aotearoa, and this is why the work is now going to be um, animating, and, and um, the work is now amplifying, rather, because mana moana, is the movement of the Pacific. Now, Māori's, let's go through that term. Mana whenua is the term that Māori's use for people who have a right to, um, of kuleana, the, um, they, have a, they have a responsibility because they've been in that area for hundreds, thousands of years, and so they know it, they have contextual awareness of it, they have cultural practices, they are mana whenua. Whenua is their synonym for land. So mana fenua is the idea of um, indigenous people <clears throat> specific to a place. So mana moana um, is the same idea, except we have mana because of our relationship with the moana, which is the ocean. So um, if you could turn the next slide, please, Sheila. In the next slide. All right, there's my old house. Um, Alex, did you ever go to that house? It was called Waiomao. I lived right next to a waterfall just before I went to um, to work with Linda Smith at Napai in 2005. Anyways, can we read that? Um, I can't read that. Um, can someone read that? Sheila, can you read it out? or um, Spencer, because it's, it. it's, it's so small on my screen. Okay. Well, it's Mahalo. in um, Hawaiian. <laughs> it's Maori. Right. See, isn't that funny? funny Maori. Do you want me to try and read that? Yeah. Hiki oi, hiki oi, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Give it a Mati go. Mati matua, ka mohio, mm -hmm. mati mohio, mm -hmm. ka marama, mati marama, ka tuori ai, 
Katu Rangatira I. From knowledge come knowledge knowing. From knowing mm -hmm. comes enlightenment. From enlightenment mm -hmm. comes life and freedom. <laughs> That's Mara Matanga. Do you see the sequence? It's in our language. See what happens with English is we actually dis we we actually um are unaware that knowledge and knowing we actually uh, mistake them. We we think that knowing is the same idea as knowledge. It isn't. We actually think understanding um, is a flimsy idea of just taking a test and remembering the ideas um, quickly. But it's actually the application of ideas. It's the application of an idea that makes that idea knowing. So that's what this this um, idea is for us. So we need to go into the the application of ideas, not just the talking of them. And that's what I don't know more has done. Next slide. Okay, now that's a fabulous one. Could you read that again, Alex? That's my friend um, surfing. It says the negative polarity for the scholar. Oh, he, here we're it's going into of, energy, everybody. Pre <laughs> okay. Prepare yourself. Yeah, yeah. The negative polarity for the scholar is theory. The positive polarity for the scholar is knowledge. This reveals that true knowledge cannot be acquired through theory. It can only be acquired through true direct experiential knowing. Hale Makua. Hale Makua is our um, beloved um, Kupuna, uh, who is a seer for our people. He is now in the other world, um, and, and he still inspires us tremendously. That is Carlos Andrade um, doing a bottom turn um, and, uh, off Kauai, I believe. And um, Hale Makua has been teaching us that two types of um, polarity, because of energy, this is about energy, um, the um, negative aspect of scholarship is theory. The positive aspect of scholarship is knowledge. Now, do not take that in moral terms. We're talking about energy. So what indigenous people have is knowledge. And so what Halimaku is teaching us is that we simply must come forward clear, clear, clear with our knowledge and because we're not guessing anymore. We have actually thousands of years of understanding under our belts if we simply um, contextualize it and wake up and be clear about how we differ with theorists. This is not a negative, positive meaning moral one is better than the other. We just are needing uh, the knowledge to uh, to pop now. Next, please, Sheila. Mm, okay, thanks, thanks, Spencer. Okay, so um, Sheila's going to bring up, and as we prepare, there's the hokulea. <laughs> Just seeing that picture makes me cry. Just seeing that picture. That's what the Hawaiians were doing. We were trying to be idle no more. 1976. You know, they taught us that the Kantiki was real. It wasn't. It was just a theory. And then we sailed 2,400 miles across the Pacific. We learned from Mao Piolog and Nainoa Thompson learned through his own own volition and in his in his own passion. But he also had a teacher, and that teacher was a Sarawal Pacific Islander. Now you got to know that spatial intelligence and this kind of intelligence is um is um, is an old idea, and um, but it woke us up in Hawaii. It woke us up in 1976. Our Hawaiian Renaissance was on. Because if, if, if we were able to sail 2,400 miles on a dime without any, without any um, official you know, uh, mechanisms except our knowledge of the stars, winds, and currents, you bet um, something changed. So the first order of business for me with I Don't Know More philosophically is this notion of healing. We have to heal. When you heal, you then begin to see that our knowledge systems are brilliant. Um, next slide, Sheila. So when, you, when we heal with our knowledge systems, then we begin to see people as co comrades and not as um, 
as co colonialists. You know, everybody's just doing their job. Everybody's doing their thing. But here's um, Teuta, um, and here's Kalai. I'll, I want to show pictures of Kalai in the South Point because that's where our Maori cousins left from. Um, Alex, can you read it, please? It's a beautiful quote. Or uh, Erica, yeah. who wants to read it? Okay, Alex, you got it. Okay, it's um, effulgent coherence in echo yep. means practicing the teachings and ideas that I am teaching so as to live the ideas I believe in. Tia Ota Sam Turner. Sam Turner. Teota is one of our students and our masters in applied indigenous knowledge. Uh, ako is our Hawaiian, is our Maori word for ao. Ako ao. It's the same word. It means to teach, and in the in the in the moment of your teaching, you're also learning. In the moment of your learning, you're also teaching, teaching yourself. So, so that teaching becomes an active verb idea. What's happening in indigenous epistemology is that we are we are taking all nouns and and turning them back into the verbs they have always been. And one of them, the most active um, uh, process in the world, is teaching and learning. It's not simply, you know, taking in text. It's it's living in a presence called context, and that's a difference. Everybody, everybody. Okay, next, please, Sheila. Thank you, Telta. I love her thinking, um, and that's what effulgent coherence is. That's Maro Matanga. Oh, this is my picture. I saw this guy walking down the street one day. It was so cool. This is Uncle Alex Pua talking from Molokai. Can you read it, please, Alex? In this ancient, oops. In this ancient culture, there is no good, there is no evil, there is only positive and negative, and everything has both positive and negative. There it is. That's the sum up of old ideas, everybody. Because of the nature of what quantum or quantum physics um, are, is teaching us, it's actually catching up for indigenous knowledge. And that is the world is a negative and positive structure. Negative, positive. And in this, in this negative and positive, um, um, there's got to be a balance. And what, what's been happening on the planet is we've just been um, um, weighed down with too much um, rationalization um, shaped by the monocrop of capitalism. And um, hey, that's just got to change. And uh, when we see that, we, there's there's no time for judgment. There's only time to be idle no more. So that's what Uncle Alex is teaching us. There's, it's just negative and positive energy. You know, scholarship that is that is um, negative um, is theory. You have theory in knowledge, but it's it's a little bit more um, uh, um, flaccid and um, it's a little bit not non um, non active. And the positive aspect of scholarship is knowledge. What indigenous people have is knowledge. And, um, and when we combine with theoreticians, theoreticians, the party is on. There's, there's not a negative meaning moral negative here. There's only energy in the room. So when, when indigenous people walk in a room, when we say, I don't know more, let's go because our lands and skies and seas and, and waters are in trouble, we mean it. And that's the positive aspect of scholarship. It's called movement, consciousness, all right? Um, next slide, please. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> can, you, can you read it? Okay. Mehemam nati waidua i tohu aruhia. Um, it means if um, if there's energy coming from the spiritual world, you better pay attention. And this is what we're trying to do um, with the the idea of knowledge. People, I'm looking for people to write about spirituality very, very rigorously, because when you understand the the efficacy of spirit, and spirit doesn't mean religion, and it doesn't only mean um, things that we can't we can't see or understand. Spiritual nature is the animating principle of life. It's the it's the idea that um, if there's guidance from the spirit, wake up everybody. And that's why I don't know more is so fabulous because the spirits moved you guys, and um, we totally are there with you because every continent on the planet is having an I don't know more movement. 
It's called a million trillion different things, but it happens when everybody makes the decision to wake up. Next slide, Sheila, thank you. I love that. So if guidance comes from the spirit, please pay heed to it. This is another student from Hewaka Hiringa. Um, the student is Tangi Wairia. And uh, this picture is of our Sami people. We went up um, for a WinHEC meeting uh, about three years ago, five years ago. And um, this is what um, uh, Tangi Wai says. And uh, this, I love quoting students because these students, they're, they're not your average students. They're all uh, practitioners with thir 20, 30, 40 years of practice under their belts. And this is one, one of them. Tangi Wai said the road ahead required intelligence, courage, creativity, and passion. And if that does not sum up, I don't know more, I do not know what does. So the road that you have been on did require intelligence. It completely required courage, creativity, and passion. Thank you, Tanya Wai. Um, can you put the next slide on? Now, everybody, these slides are, um, are, are just kind of snippets. I love using PowerPoint. I've, I've only started using PowerPoint in the last, um, in the last uh, five years. Because um, I love the images, I took that image outside of my house, and uh, do you see the um, the integrated nature of what uh, the world is? You can only say it so much, but then you gotta show it. Then you gotta show it. So as a um, scholar, I love to show images with quotations. So the purpose for Hewaka Hiringa, our Masters in Applied Indigenous Knowledge here at Te Wananga o Aotearoa, the largest Māori university in the world with 35,000 students. Our purpose is transformation through cultural knowledge practices. The word there is practice. Um, and that's what uh, I'm hoping I Don't Know More is doing with many of your peoples, is you're supporting the notion that you must practice something to once again align ourselves with the environment and the awareness of how best to serve her. Next. Love that picture, everybody. Isn't that a great picture, Alex? Just love it. I love that. So that's what we're doing. These are leho. These are the leho that I find for my home. Um, we use these as squid lures. And um, those are the words um, that are synonyms for um, I don't know more. Uh, hiringa, uh, hihiri, Sili, iini, hihili. These are all Tongan, Samoan, Hawaiian, and Maori words. And um, see how they're all related? It basically is the um, it is um, the quantum. It's an it's the energetic field that we can't see, but we know is there because we have a connection with our intention. Uh, Husserl said intentionality is the hallmark of consciousness. Don't you love that? And uh, what he's saying is hihili is the hallmark of consciousness. We have to have a connection with our with what we what our intentions are and what our actions are. And that's what Hihiri means. Also when I went to India and I gave um, I took uh, forty of those um leho as um uh, koha as makana to um to India as uh, as gifts to the temples that I went to. Um did you know that those lehos, those exact ones, are um, uh, kinolao, are body forms of uh, Shiva? So everyone was thrilled to receive them, and um, it was like the best gift of the entire world to go to India with forty, which is a perfect unit of offering, and to give these shells out. But uh, this is another bowl because uh, I spend a lot of time outdoors, and these shells just come to me. Um, as gifts, and I'm always grateful. But th that that slide is is to let you know that our Pacific is rising. Our people are getting to know each other. We're getting to know landlocked people also. But uh, the Pacific, we're different. We are. We run into oceans. We have a relationship with water, and um, we grow. We grow up with blue sky, blue water. You know what I mean? And blue is the color of love. Let me just tell you now. It's the, it's the old color of love. And uh, I think that's what makes us different. Next slide, please, Sheila. That's what I love about blue. When you learn that blue is the ancient color of love, I learned that in India. Um, I've read that in Turkey. Uh, I've understood that in China. Um, ooh, this is, a, this is a hard one, Erica. Um, does someone want to read it? Or do you want to type it down? 
I think this is from Kiriti. By the way, this is uh, Hawaii, everybody. I love putting pictures that just blow people's minds. This is the top of Mauna Kea, where I'm, the island I'm from. This is Waiau. This is Lake Waiau. And um, that's a very sacred water. Kereti Rautangata has taught us this, and uh, he says it very spectacularly. He's our uh, carving um, master teacher here in New Zealand. He says, all our super metaphysical experiences in life must be brought down past the philosophical and intellectual levels into embodied living practices to be of any real use to humanity. Because in doing so, when one touches that consciousness, even for a split second, you render divine everything you do on this plane through your life's practice. <laughs> Thanks, Kennedy. Isn't that beautiful? Basically, over and over and over, we're asking people to be a person of your, your word, a person of your intention, because when you are, then your actions will align, and you will be less in the cognitive state, you will be in the loving state. Thanks, Sheila. Next one, please. I really think the loving state is uh, in an intelligent... Um, uh, consciousness and uh, it's not something you learn in school it's something you learn on your own with others and when you're in, in service to LAN um, oh we are in a time of changing paradigms did you did the um, did the sh um, the image change yet almost Tere Nata is one of our leaders here, Te Wānango Aotearoa, and he has taught us that we are in a time of changing paradigms. Do you see that, that um, those, those pohaku in the water? They look like mo'o to me, and I love that image because mo'o is an ancient idea um, that reminds me that we are all part of um, an older species. Mo'o is a reptile, mo'o is a dragon, Mo'o, you know, our word for um, genealogy is mo'o kua hau. Um, our word for um, storytelling is mo'o lelo, the mo'o that, uh, that has, speaks. Uh, our, our word for grandchild is mo'o puna, which is the, um, the, uh, the mo'o that comes from our beloved waters. <laughs> so mo'o plays a, a wonderful um, image, and that's why um, that image is given to you as a gift. And Turi Natai um, said, we are in a time of changing paradigms. We are so in a time of changing paradigms. So talking about it is almost unbearable. Um, but um, we only have time to trust, believe, and be idle no more. So um, that's why I said yes to Alex in this request to do a mono talk, which I hardly give lectures. I just facilitate your own learning. So a um, couple more slides, and then uh, let's take some questions. Isn't that a great picture? Thanks, Sheila, for um, putting us on to the next slide. There it is. Look at that. That is vai vai. Woo! I love that image. That is our, um, our Ko'olau Range, where I'm from, on the island of Oahu, uh, Ko'olau Poko, um, Ko'olau Loa. And um, that's on a really rainy um, Makahiki day. And our word for wealth is wa vai vai. It means water, water. It's, it's our word for wealth. Isn't that wild? So um, if you think about water, if you think about um, what it means to see water, um, I've seen water flow. Um, I've seen water stagnant. When it's stagnant and smells, it has to keep flowing. So our word for, um, for wealth then is a synonym of flowing. We shared. We didn't barter. We shared. That energy is um, is one of genuine concern for other. When you're genuinely concerned for other, you're actually um, working uh, in a different frequency of um, of knowledge, of interest, of continuity, of um, of awareness. So that's why I believe we had water, water as a synonym for wealth, um, because it had to it had to flow. It had to flow from you, and it had to keep being given. And, and that, for me, is a synonym for aloha. And um, I believe aloha is our true wealth. And uh, it's an energetic field that's both um, 
that leans into the positive and um, keeps that that energy um, flowing out. So um, that's why I think indigenous epistemology, when it's shaped around loving, and this is not a this is not a weak thing to say. Um, as you as you develop your idle no more movement, um, more patience is needed with others, and more patience is needed um, with how we deal with um, structures that seem impossible. And that form of patience is an actual strength to me, um, and that is aloha. And uh, I truly believe that aloha is our uh, true intelligence. Um, and I think that's the last slide, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, Sheila, could you just check? Just put this to, is that it? Isn't that a great picture, you guys? Just love it. That's the poly. Uh, Mana Moana, Pacific Rises, yay! Uh, that is a picture that I have in my house. I don't know who's, that's probably a Jaws in Maui. But uh, look at that, look at that picture. You know what I mean? I, oh my lord, that, that must be a 40, 50 foot wave. That is unbelievable. So that's what I feel now. That's what I feel that we're doing. We're riding a really big wave. But you better know that we got to know what we're doing because a, a surfer like that does not go into um, uh, a set like that without tremendous knowledge, tremendous courage, tremendous passion. So um, that's why I, I call this talk Mana Moana. We are Pacifica rising and we can offer something to the planet. We can offer the strength and efficacy of what love is. Um, uh, so that's it. That's it for me. And uh, Erica has asked a question: How can you turn a theory of love into action, especially with regard to resisting oppressive governments like in Canada? Well, great question. And you know, I'm telling you, Hawaiians have hit rock bottom, um, and uh, we hit rock bottom a long time ago. And um, the thing is, you gotta love those guys. Nothing. There's nothing oppressing us. It's our response. To, to think their thinking that oppresses us. Honest, I'm, I'm changed because I can't think. What happens in Hawaiian sense, is, Erica, is if we do not, if we aren't able to unhook from their he here, then we're simply going to be dragged down by their thinking. So that's why they will continue to oppress, but it's not, it's not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. So Hawaiian thinking, you've got to unhook from what we call he here and you gotta let it go and you gotta keep doing inside your own home loving practices inside your own heart inside inside that is the energy of where we will heal and eventually that that lawman that political you know garut is gonna is going to change he's gonna he's not gonna be voted in he's you know what I mean things of quality have no fear of time. That's what I know, Erica. We have no fear of time, except time's up. So we must get it right. And that's what loving means to me. And that means that um, we have to be clear. Because governments come and go. And um, the, the, the idea is the American government is going to um, collapse within the next eight, nine, ten years. So if people don't believe that, all you got to do is know your history. But um, yeah, that's Eric. I hope that was helpful. Question from Spencer: At some point, could you speak more to the solidarity between Hawaii and the Maori people? What kind of cooperation and organizing is happening between these people? Well, thanks, thanks, Spencer. Um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, organization happening right now. Mostly, we're marrying into each other. My partner is um, Maori. I know literally 20 couples. So. You know, the intermarrying of an idea is um, also the healing of it. So we're beginning to know each other and um, respectfully and um, lovingly. Um, but they allowed me to come here, and I'm Hawaiian, and um, they allowed me to be um, part of developing, producing, and teaching um, in this radical program. Do you know our master's degree? You don't need a, a bachelor's degree to get in. <laughs> It's uh, it's the most radical program. I love it because you don't need a bachelor's, but you better have a kaupapa. You better have a practice. 
So a master's in applied indigenous knowledge means you must have a practice in an indigenous um, um, practice. So we have storytellers, we have healers, we have um, carvers, we have weavers, we have um, uh, fuckapapa, we have people who know genealogy, we have people who know um, prayers, and um, uh, only an audio. So this is what's happening, is that people are actually inviting others in, and uh, now is the time to collaborate unusually. Um, so any other questions? Another, another way that we're collaborating is that Māori have come to Hawaii years ago, 20 years ago, and um, helped us develop our immersion, uh, language immersion movements. They called it the Kohongareo, the, um, the language nest. We called ours the Punanaleo. So we're 20, 30 years into that movement. And so we've now got our um, Hawaiian language is strengthening slowly. But um, it is it is rising. The hokulea, our um, our canoe, our double hulled vakaulua, is also um, inspired the Maori to develop their um, um, wakaulua tradition. So throughout the Pacific, people are regaining knowledge systems and healing. Um, and here's a question from um, Buttercup in Manitoba: How can non-indigenous teachers incorporate indigenous knowledge into our classrooms? <laughs> Great question, Buttercup. Um, the idea of indigenous, all from it, it means for me, is that you are looking at systems that have endured, knowledge systems that have endured specific to a place over time. So you bring in your one of your students' um, parents if they're available. You bring in uh, stories from that area that rename the mountains in older ways because that mountain has a is a name for a specific reason. Uh, you bring in um, um, stories, books, videos um, that are made by indigenous people. There are many, many out there. Um, you bring in um, languages, and um, you have a whole five minutes where you only speak a certain language. You could uh, you could honor it. You bring in um, the philosophies of certain people. You bring in songs. You bring in you. There's so much to bring in. And, uh, and to meaningfully respect it, so it's not a um, it's not a, um, a false respect. Um, this is the future of humanity um, is going toward things that um, have endured for a reason, and that's all indigenous means is um, is what has endured for a reason. Uh, question from a YouTube viewer: What are some of the main struggles facing the Maori people today? Oh my gosh, Maori are. Um, they're in a place where everyone views this this country, um, Aotearoa, New Zealand, as a paradise. So I'm quite relieved because it's giving Hawaii a little bit of a break. Um, so they're 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 under um, siege with um, wealthy people um, purchasing land. I've seen the land prices triple in the last ten years, and uh, um, the average house here is in uh, New Zealand um, in the city is around five hundred thousand. So um, what I see here is that um, land struggles, um, language struggles, political um, struggles, it's the same. We're doing the same things differently on all of our continents. But Māori have a, um, have a continued use of their marae systems. Um, it's in, it's in, um, it's, um, it needs to be supported and, and um in ways that are are not done nowadays, I I feel that they they need more support in there. But same like Hawaiians, it's in their education systems. It's um, uh, it's just um, it's the same. Uh, what do you mean video is working? No questions. Um, so I just want to say that our Maori cousins, being the being that they are Hawaiians, that um, we view them as our Pacific cousins, um, we are inspired by them. I have been always inspired by Māori and now um, 30 years after um, their first kind of um, um, educational exchange in Hawaii 30 or 40 years ago um, we are able to offer them something and that is the efficacy of Aloha. Question from Melanie Rose can you explain how if indigenous worldviews are different from religions? Oh <laughs> great question Melanie! Um, absolutely um, Religion is the spirituality is um, religion is the bureaucracy of spirituality. Just so you know that, um, 
And um, because there's so many different um, words or synonyms for what spirituality is, um, I will not try to describe religion. Um, I've learned that very many years ago. My mother was almost a nun, and we grew up um, Catholic. Um, but indigenous worldviews are different from religions in profound and significant ways. Religion is the bureaucracy of spirituality. What I'm talking about in relationship to spirituality is something totally different. Um, spirituality is like the animating principle, um, um, the, the notion of um, specific care because we actually see the person, the notion of um, learning from our dreams. Um, because we are not afraid of things that we don't understand. Um, spirituality is a very unusual term. Wailua is what we call it in Hawaii. Um, but uh, I'm not afraid of spirituality. But to, to really understand it, go into the multiple dictionaries and find the meaning. Um, because um, it, do, it does say that um, some version of spirituality is... Um, um, processes of religion, but I'm not talking about that definition. I'm talking about something older than that. So, um, indigenous knowledge systems is completely different from religion because um, if it doesn't work, um, that knowledge didn't sustain itself. So, if we miss the island with our with our canoe and we didn't get to it, we simply uh, uh, changed our knowledge system so that we could learn from it. So indigenous knowledge systems are that which is endured over a period of time for specific reasons. Then in California, what are your thoughts on the situation in Episcopal L.C. Pope Talk? How can we show solidarity with people far away from our own communities in similar situations as our own? Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Ben. Um, Erica, can you take that one? Yeah, Erica, can you take that one? Because I'm an energy girl. I can just say, Ben, your job is to be really clear and, and be clear with your life and be a positive aspect and send energy. But, um, yeah, can you explain Elsie, Erica? Oh, Alex, it's your job. So what? now, you guys, it's not the specific notion because there's millions of them across the world. It's the fact that it's all happening simultaneously. So what we can do is what we must be doing is be befriending each other, um, you know, energetically, you know, keeping very strong within ourselves. No negative energy sent out to anybody. You know, watch what you put in your body as an example of what you're putting in your mind. Um, you know, love in, and um, and then and then digest hatred. Just keep digesting. We're taught to eat um, the negative energy of the world. And then you go swimming, and then it gets all dissipated, man. You know, that, that's why we surf. What, are you kidding? That's why, look at this guy. Look at that picture. You know what I mean? This guy is into it. Because it's, you know, and, and that's spirit. That's holy. Being able to do that well is, is the same thing as, as feeding a child well. You know, it's just as courageous. So I'm not sure what's happening in Elsie. But um, I got to tell you, it's happening in Kaka'ako, it's happening in, in Honolulu, it's happening in um, Mount Albert. Um, I'm turning off my video. Here we go. Okay, everybody. We're taking a little bit of a break um, to see um, what's working and what's not working. And I'm back on. Is it working, Spencer? Is it okay? This is the first time I'm doing this. Someone gave me these just, you know, 10 minutes ago. All right. Keep going through. It's not working. Keep going, though. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Readers? Spectators? I'm an indigenous epistemologist. It's a kind of a funny word, but it's time to do... It's time to just make fun of knowledge because... Knowledge is now stupid. People actually think they're smart when they got a PhD. How crazy is that? So, can you put, oh, absolutely. Um, the question is, can I talk about food sovereignty? Yes. One of the biggest movements in Hawaii that's underground, but that's above ground, that's in ground, <laughs> that's necessary, that Alex is going to any minute now, is 
called our Food Sovereignty Movement. Um, it's led by um, Kukui Maunakea Fourth and her husband Gary over at um, Waianae on the island of Oahu. Every single island has mo uh, movements, however, but we are inspired by Ma'o Farms. So look up Ma'o, Malai O Pio, M A O, Ma'o. And um, in the most in the most challenging situations, these guys started an organic farm um, that's run by teenagers. And uh, it's the most um, productive organic farm on the island of Oahu, and it is amazing. Um, we're taking 60 Māori um, to stay there for three days um, in Whipsy. And um, we're doing that in uh, um, the end of May of next year. And it's going to be awesome. Because what's happening now is food is now... I mean, it's long ago been a commodity, but it is a super commodity now. We, we actually think our time is better spent um, uh, gaining money so we can purchase food instead of learning how to take care of land and um, our animals. So that's why you have to go to Mountain Farms and check it out because it's a movement against all odds to get our kids interested, and they are. I've, I've known many of them, and some of the managers are my beloved friends, um, Ku'u and Kowi. And um, they are dedicated to waking up and to feeding their families and to doing it in a way that um, allows the continuity of knowledge to occur. Because 95% of our food is shipped in, in Hawaii. Isn't that amazing? That's so freaky. You guys got to know how freaky that is. Because only a generation ago, it was about 5%, uh, 8%. So within a generation, because when we became a state, which is it didn't really happen, we just thought it did in 1959, um, just, uh, just commodification just flooded in. Uh, and that's called uh, American capitalism. So um, uh, within one generation, uh, our diabetes is up. We have children with diabetes. Our suicide uh, rates um, are up again. Um, and the weird thing now is with pharmaceuticals, you must know this, that um, most, um, most of our, um, our antidepressants, they actually say on the jar, um, be careful, this might cause suicide. And we know this now. Many of my friends have been on antidepressants and, um, um, and killed themselves. So we have to be awake and we have to wake up. And I think that really starts with our care of land. And land grows our food. We have a relationship again. We understand the moon cycles. We understand where the winds come from. We understand when the rains come from. We have a relationship again with that which feeds us, which is our word called Aina. So please, if there's any food around you um, growing, um, be a part of it and be a part of gathering and giving it away. So the question from Facebook, can you discuss differences between knowledge, knowing, and understanding? Absolutely. The differences are between knowledge, knowing, and understanding are found oftentimes in our indigenous languages. So go into your indigenous language. And if you don't know any, go and find someone. Because um, for Hawaiian, it's uh, mana'o i'o is knowing, mana'o lana is knowledge, and aloha is understanding. Um, mana'o lana is our, our word for knowledge. Lana lana means to float. So it's knowledge that floats. It's not integrated. It's just, just like na. It's just floating. Mana o lana. Mana o i'o, on the other hand, is i'o. It goes in because we've experienced it. And that's the verb nature of knowledge called knowing or mana o i'o. It's knowing. So knowing is a verb. You know, knowledge is the noun. And then, of course, understanding. You know, when someone says they understand something and then they still treat a child poorly, they, you know, they don't understand anything in my book. So um, understanding is, um, for us, the highest expression of understanding is loving. And so that's why uh, aloha is our highest intelligence because that's how you understand something. If something goes in conflict and you have trouble, you got to figure it out. Once you understand it, there's love there. Because if there's no love, then all you have is conflict. You know what I mean? So the purpose of conflict, um, Heidegger says, is um, unity. Um, I think that's brilliant. Um, uh, our guy, our beloved guy, um, uh, what is his name, who wrote Pedagogy of the Press? Um, I met him. Alex, remember? Paulo Freire. Yeah. Paulo Freire said, um, the midwife of consciousness, conflict is a midwife of consciousness. So without conflict, you can't deliver a new understanding. 
This is why I don't know more is so important. Without conflict, we can't get to the next place. But the question is now, as we enter a second year of I don't know more, is what is the quality of that conflict? Are we getting to resolution? Are we getting to forgiveness? Are we getting to loving? Because if we're not, then all you got is more conflict. And that's unsustainable. That's the point of, um, of these movements, is that you have to um, begin to um, forgive and, um, and go into the loving state. Okay, I think that's a great place to wrap up. Any more questions? You have mentioned Heidegger and Husserl. How do you think indigenous philosophies can work with current Western academic philosophies? Oh, that's a big one. Um, I think um, one is theory, the other is knowledge. I think it's time now to activate um, knowledge um, keepers and um, to get back into the clarity of how we differ and to strengthen that, um, to strengthen how we differ um, with um, ultimately what we have in common. And uh, that's that. Um, that same difference idea of found in the post-quantum realities. What we have in common is our difference. We are doing the same thing differently. Do you get that, you guys? We can hold difference at the heart of our hearts if love is at, is the core of our intelligence. But you must, must develop that form of intelligence to even recognize that this philosophy is a more enduring one. So, um, 11.52, whoa, fabulous. Almost been an hour. That's, I mean, evidently I'm a professional yakker, Alex. Can't believe that. You made me yak for an hour. Any more questions, Spencer? Handsome guy? Ooh. Oh, here's Christine. Oh. Hi, Christine. Mun and others there. How do you respond to continue to colonize colonial dynamics in institutions where indigenous knowledges are being included? For instance, when trying to bring in knowledges of the land and the focus on money and budgets continue to take precedence. So what? Christine, cut it out. Just keep doing it. You get the knowledge, and um, the universities are going to crumble. So just keep practicing. Yeah, you know, if I had to wait for a budget, yeah, are you kidding? You know, money has nothing to do with what we're talking about. It can amplify idea, but that's only technically. The idea that I'm going for is, is spiritually. The amplification of knowledge that endures is through energy. It's not through money. Money is the lower form. Relationship is the higher form. Is your are your relationships in good order? Um, I have uh, you know. Ask me how much money we have over here doing this masters. Come on, you know every single tuakana, including you, Alex, is doing it for free, for free. And everyone said you can't you can't do that. It's impossible. No one will be a supervisor for free. Well, I I, I beg to differ. Uh, we, we've got fifty. Super PhD supervisors, because we got to think differently. When they say we have no money, the program's got to close because we can't have, you know, we can't afford the supervisors. It's like, no, we can get supervisors because we have friends. So that's my point to you, Christine, is you must continue to do the practice. And if the people say it's no more budget, you say it's okay, we'll do it another way. All right, got it? Joanne says, how do we unite as the indigenous people of the Americas while still maintaining the integrity of each specific nation? Fabulous. Fabulous. We do so by doing just that. We unite. And um, we unite and by thinking that the Mana Moana will have to include you landlocked lovers. And, um, and then the party's on. Um, because our specificity... Once you get into the specificity of life and you really drill down to its beauty, what you'll find is universal principles, universal principles of care, uh, wisdom, um, uh, affection, um, everything. So that's how we do it. We, we, we can hold the specificity of each place and not want to colonize it, neo-colonize it, or franchise it. Don't give me your good ideas because even good ideas um, will um, neo-colonize me. You have to see me for what I know and ask the question, what do you mean about that? So that um, my understanding of the world can empower my people and the people in the places that I occupy. And that's the difference. Um, to respect the specificity of place is to engender the universal principle of aloha. Let's wrap it up, gang. So I hope I um, in doing this um, podcast, I. Um, really want to um, thank you, Alex, for the invitation, and Sheila, for the continued inspiration that you are for, for, for many. 
um, and uh, Spencer for helping me um, get on this Gmail, and uh, for Erica for being an incredibly fast typist. Um, but I'd like to also thank um, my kupuna, my beloveds, and um, all the people that have brought us here today. They have helped us get to this place, everyone. And as we celebrate the first year of Idle No More, you must know that we have been lucky to be here because of the people that have allowed us to, to come. So mahalo i kia kua, na kini a kua, na auma kua, na kupuna. O kia vahi. Mahalo piha, mahalo nui loa, mahalo kakua pau. From the inside to the outside, from the beginning of time to the end of space, know that we have always been grateful. Mahalo, everybody. <laughs>